Hello everyone, uh, welcome to today's lecture. I hope that you had the opportunity to go through what we discussed uh, in the last class. Uh, to in today's class we will um, take up some other aspects of uh, CC bond formations, uh, but before that we will have a brief uh, look at what we did last time. So we uh, first looked at how uh, a ketone uh, can uh, actually be deprotonated uh, and of course uh, we can have um, the formation of the corresponding anion and that anion can be in equilibrium with the original ketone uh, depending on uh, various factors such as the acidity of the proton uh, which is alpha to the carbonyl and also the strength of the base. And this will be in a kind of resonance form with the O minus here and then we discussed the ambident uh, nucleophilicity of this type of uh, enolates. Uh, this enolate uh, can react either through oxygen or through carbon and therefore the electrophile can come in either here or it can come in here. So this way we can uh, tune uh, the reaction. Uh, of course we looked at uh, the uh, solvent effect, the cation effect because here uh, when we take a base uh, we also have a counter cation here. So this counter cation uh, will also play a very important role. So um, the, the effect of the uh, solvent, effect of the uh, nature of the M plus and uh, the uh, nature of the electrophile uh, makes uh, the O alkylation or C alkylation of enolates to occur. Uh, at the same time we also discussed uh, how the um, putting of an extra group here like for example you have a functional group here uh, which we can put it as a as an ester or a sulfonyl or a nitro and then we let the reaction go with softer nucleophiles uh, to attack it here and then of course we remove the functional group where we can get the C alkylated product. So we have the C alkylation to go further and then we introduced um, enamine chemistry which uh, is well known uh, and uh, we saw how enamines can be allowed to form the CC bond uh, to take place and via this type of uh, intermediates. Uh, of course uh, we have the um, resonance structure of these and then CC bond formation can be done. Uh, but then we also saw uh, uh, the problems associated with the uh, this enamine chemistry for example it can be an N alkylation or it can be that uh, the formation of uh, enamines where when there is a substituent here uh, on the uh, left hand side that is uh, if we have a substituent here on this side then generation of this type of enamines becomes difficult. So it is not easy to generate this enamines and these are the enamines that are formed from say for example you have a ketone which of uh, which is of unsymmetrical type. So these were the, the problems but at the same time we also saw how the enamines can be allowed to react and uh, form various natural products or uh, uh, complicated molecules in, in an easy fashion. So uh, the, these uh, problems of enamines or the problems of enolate chemistry can be to some extent avoided if we go for uh, enol silyl ethers. So as you know that we can uh, take an uh, uh, unsymmetrical ketone and uh, at, at a high temperature like for example if you have a, a triethylamine and chlorotrimethyl silane at, at say um, reflux temperature. So like about 100 degrees or so we can easily make the enol silyl ether of this kind. On the other hand if we take a, a, a base uh, as strong as LDA and at minus 78 degrees 
centigrade we uh, do the reaction then of course we can get the enol silyl ether of this kind. So we have uh, uh, conditions under which different types of enol silyl ethers can be uh, procured. Uh, one is uh, this is under kinetic uh, condition and this is under thermodynamic conditions and then uh, we can react with uh, electrophiles uh, particularly these electrophiles need to be R plus that means they are cationic in nature. And then we have uh, the formation of the corresponding CC bond here. Now it is important that uh, we have uh, this enol silyl ether and therefore uh, the uh, oxygen silicon bond is strong, oxygen is involved in this and therefore uh, the formation of uh, this type of intermediates uh, is not uh, uh, easily uh, possible because you have a positive charge on electronegative oxygen. So if we look at this, this type of uh, resonance structure uh, is not a particularly favored, this is more favored and therefore the enol silyl ethers are uh, relatively poor nucleophiles and they react only with um, uh, strong electrophiles. So uh, as it is written here, enol silyl ethers can be used directly as weak nucleophiles uh, with very uh, reactive electrophiles such as carbonium ions, the halogens or pseudo halogens such as this uh, phenyl sulfenyl chloride or phenyl selenyl chloride or nitrosyl chloride. Uh, they can of course be cleaved uh, say if we have uh, an enol silyl ether and if you want to cleave then you can cleave it with the methyl lithium or a lithium amide or tetrabutyl ammonium fluoride. So it suppose you have a tetrabutyl ammonium fluoride or any other nucleophile then takes attaches on to the uh, silicon here as, and then the negative charge comes out and you can generate now an enolate here. And then you have a strong sil silicon uh, fluorine bond is formed and to make this trimethyl silyl fluoride. And this is now a better nucleophile, it is like a, any other uh, enolate. The same thing we can do it with methyl lithium and lithium amide for example. So this way uh, the uh, relatively weak nucleophilicity of an enol silyl ether could be um, uh, modified and can be made into a more nucleophilic enolate ion. On the other hand if we have a very strong electrophile uh, reacting with enol silyl ethers then of course the reaction uh, takes place. So either you increase the nucleophilicity or you uh, in, uh, react with highly electrophilic uh, species uh, for the reaction of enol silyl ethers. Now there are several examples in the literature for example if we take an enol silyl ether of this type which we can make it um, by uh, kinetic uh, deprotonation and react with tertiary butyl chloride for example in the presence of titanium tetrachloride then of course as you can see that we generate basically a, a tertiary cation and then tertiary cation then reacts with this enol silyl ether to form this uh, ketone. Such a reaction is not possible with say enamines very easily or even enolates very easily. In a similar fashion this enol silyl ether reacts with this uh, tertiary chloride in the presence of titanium tertiary chloride and then we have this carbon-carbon um, uh, bond formed. Uh, and also uh, similarly this enol silyl ether forming from the uh, CC bond at this uh, particular alpha position of the carbonyl group here. Now if we uh, take a tertiary butyl acetate and using iodide then this dienol silyl ether leads to the formation of this particular tertiary butyl group that is attached. If we see in the literature uh, that how such kind of tertiary uh, butyl groups need to be introduced, uh, they are not that many straightforward methods. So enol silyl ether is a very easy way by which we can introduce the tertiary groups uh, alpha to the carbonyl group easily. Uh, as, as for example, we can take a ketone and then react with this particular base and then carbon disulfide and methyl iodide 
So basically we are deprotonating here and reacting with uh, carbon disulfide uh, in this way and then trapping the, so if we react it with this particular uh, anion to the carbon then you generate this carbon sulfur bond uh, as a uh, carbon S minus and then that reacts with methyl iodide to form S uh, Me bond. In a similar fashion we can use the second proton and then we form the second S Me bond. So this is how the carbon disulfide can react and then we if we use an excess of uh, lithium dimethyl cuprate then first one attacks and then it leaves the S methyl as a living group forming this intermediate and similarly we can add uh, one more time lithium dimethyl cuprate uh, to it uh, two times in fact and then eventually uh, the uh, tertiary brittle group comes on to the alpha position. So it is something not very easy that means you start with the ketone and then you make this particular intermediate and then go via this. So it is a little longer route to form this. On the other hand if we use enol silyl ether chemistry so we start we can start with the same ketone make an enol silyl ether and then directly react with the, a, a source of tertiary cation here and then go to the same molecule like this. So this is the advantage of uh, enol silyl ether based chemistry and uh, it has also been seen that uh, the enol molecules which are generated from the ester can react with uh, uh, these type of molecules in the presence of trimethyl silyl triflate as a Lewis acid and uh, we can uh, generate uh, say in the presence of uh, Lewis acid we can expect to form uh, something like this as a as an intermediate uh, where now you have a cation that is stabilized by the nitrogen. Uh, so uh, now your enol uh, this uh, ester here uh, reacts onto this carbon and then you generate this species here. Uh, and uh, how can you make this? You can start with this and react with uh, chloromethoxy uh, methane and then you can generate this. So basically this is a very important uh, way of, of generating this type of species which are useful for the making of a CC bond for example. So um, uh, in a similar fashion the enol silyl ethers also react with this type of uh, uh, manic type of intermediates to, to undergo reaction of uh, leading to CC bond formation. And uh, of course we can also make use of this type of intermediates uh, with uh, TiCl4 generating again as uh, we discussed earlier that you can generate the positive charge here and of course you have the uh, remaining part of the molecule where we can think about having a, a species of this kind reacting with the uh, enol silyl ether. So this is how the species that reacts in this way it will come and it will react with this part and then lead to the formation of this. So this is how the CC bond uh, reaction uh, occurs with enol silyl ether. So uh, this is an advantage because um, uh, you do not have to deal with, uh, uh, with the enolates or enamines. Uh, and of course you can even use uh, tertiary brittle uh, groups uh, if the cations can be generated. But then uh, they, they, there are disadvantages of course at the same time uh, that uh, you need uh, a molecule that can generate uh, a cation. For example we can also take say you have a phenyl S uh, CH2 Cl and you can generate this phenyl S CH2 uh, uh, plus which is now uh, stabilized by the uh, sulfur and therefore you have uh, this type of species form. So you have the resonance between these two and then, then the nucleophile from the enol silyl ether uh, can attack onto this particular species carbon atom. So uh, one can carry out uh, this kind of reactions and uh, uh, this will give uh, 
uh, uh, what will it give is, uh, is a ketone here and then CH2S phenyl. So this type of molecules can be made. Now this is possible only because uh, directly the reaction will not take place and then until, unless and until we use a Lewis acid to it. Say for example you have a zinc chloride or, or any other Lewis acid that takes away the chlorine from here generating a positive charge on the, the primary carbon atom which is stabilized by the sulfur and therefore this stabilized carbocation or, or sulfonium ion then reacts to form CC bond and then reaction occurs. So this is these are the various ways by which enol salyl ether can be used. Now there is uh, uh, another way of using uh, uh, amine, amine chemistry for a CC bond formation. So, so far what we discussed was that we start with an enolate based chemistry uh, and then of course uh, we can change into electron withdrawing group attachment alpha to that so that CC bond formation can be done. Then we saw uh, enamine based chemistry and then there are problems of different kind associated with enamine chemistry and then we saw uh, silyl enol ethers uh, and then we saw the also the advantages and disadvantages of silyl enol ether chemistry. Now we look at alkylation via imine chemistry. So if suppose we are in a position to make an imine of this type, uh, say for example uh, with, a, with a carbonyl group like an aldehyde from here. So if we react with uh, NH2 here and R group here, then we can get the corresponding imine. Now we can uh, do the deprotonation of this hydrogen uh, by base. Uh, so what we have is uh, removal of this proton leading to the negative charge uh, which is stabilized uh, alpha to the imine group. And uh, this can exist in this form or it can exist in this form. And then when the reaction occurs or the carbon then we have a CC bond formation here. And now uh, what happens that uh, we have uh, preference of the M plus uh, to stay close to nitrogen because nitrogen is uh, more uh, electronegative and uh, then the C alkylation occurs. That means the same uh, situation as we discussed earlier when we were talking about the enolate based chemistry is that the counter ion M plus has to be very close to the uh, nitrogen or oxygen so that the, uh, uh, the reaction occurs to form a CC bond rather than OC or NC bond. And that is further we of course have to have uh, C is soft therefore and nitrogen is hard and therefore C alkylation will occur with softer electrophiles. So this is how the imine chemistry's basic uh, requirements are uh, ne uh, needed to be fulfilled. Now if we take uh, a ketone and uh, make a reaction with a primary amine which is a chiral amine. So we, we take this as a chiral center and we make this particular imine which is now uh, chiral because the uh, amine was the chiral. And now if we take the LDA as a strong base and ethyl iodide and then finally uh, the, do the hydrolysis this is what is obtained and this particular alpha ethyl ketone is uh, optically pure. So what happens here is that the, um, the geometry of the uh, final molecule is dependent on uh, the intermediates that are formed and then the anion when the anion is formed from here, this anion, this anion can be uh, resonance stabilized and therefore this kind of uh, uh, enamine is formed and this enamine uh, is, is such that the chosen part of the amine uh, allows the O chelation with the lithium. So if this is beta oriented the whole molecule is beta oriented and therefore the methoxy group which has a coordination with the lithium is also on the beta side and then the attack also take place uh, at the ethyl carbon from the beta side and then we get the, uh, 
introduction of the carbon carbon bond or from the beta side because the beta chelation is the one that is uh, guiding this and then eventually after the hydrolysis of this carbon imine uh, double bond N bond or the imine bond that leads to the formation of the uh, ketone where this is beta oriented. In the acyclic systems it is uh, somewhat uh, different uh, like if we take a similar type of amine chiral amine and react with uh, tertiary butyl this is obtained from tertiary butyl uh, and this part of the ketone and this can give uh, uh, the optically pure uh, imine and when this is deprotonated from here this deprotonation occurs then what we have is this intermediate which is of course stabilized to the oxygen as we, we saw earlier time. Now if uh, this is of course beta oriented and therefore everything is beta oriented and the reaction should occur from the beta side. So as you can see from here that um, this particular uh, since the uh, ketone is acyclic therefore there are two possibilities one is uh, cis and the other one is trans. Uh, imine uh, or the enamine to form. So uh, when the deprotonation takes place we can get this cis uh, uh, enamine uh, where the uh, this particular group and this group here are cis to each other or if we heat it then of course we have this group and this group are trans to each other. So this is thermodynamically more stable because the, uh, the group here propyl group and the, uh, the nitrogen based uh, group are trans to each other. So if we uh, allow this particular electrophile to react with this enamine then we can expect that tertiary butyl uh, ketone and here when H is here PR is here then tertiary butyl this particular R group should come from the beta side. And if we look at this and so this and this are the same because if we, if we rotate it here then the PR will come on the, on the left hand side and the R which is beta oriented will become alpha oriented. So this is how the molecule can be written up. So essentially the uh, alkylation is taking place from the beta side but uh, then it is of low enantiomeric excess because when such a reaction is done you will definitely prefer that um, much of trans product is formed and less amount of cis especially at a little bit higher temperature and therefore this um, low enantiomeric excess is formed because much of it will go to the trans product. Now if in the trans product when the reaction takes place of course the R group comes from the beta side and as you can see that it is high enantiomerically pure compound is close to 94 percent enantiomeric excess. So this is the uh, reaction of the uh, acyclic systems. So uh, there are advantages and there are of course disadvantages. Now this was exploited by Dieter Enders uh, in uh, asymmetric alkylation in 1976 and there are two very well known um, SAMP and RAMP uh, as uh, two ligands which are chiral ligands uh, which are uh, prepared and used uh, as you can see it here. So there is an asymmetric center here and there is an asymmetric center here. So this is S1 amino 2 methoxy methyl pyrrolidine and the other one is R1 amino methoxy 2 methoxy methyl pyrrolidine. So one is SAMP because of this SAMP and the other is RAMP and that is how they are known as SAMP and RAMP hydrazines uh, introduced by Dieter Enders. Uh, not uh, much is now being done on these but they are very popular, uh, they were once upon a time very popular and even now Dieter Enders and others do make use of this in many uh, reactions. Now uh, what exactly happens we need to understand it is that if we take a ketone of this kind and react with uh, one of the two uh, SAMP and RAMP uh, hydrazines then we get at 80 degrees 
we get uh, this uh, imine that is formed and when this is reacted with a base uh, at, at uh, 0 degrees and lower the temperature to 100 degrees and then eventually slowly bring to the room temperature then this reaction leads to uh, the uh, introduction of the R3 group as an electrophile uh, and the CC bond is formed and then you need to cleave this uh, by ozonolysis or methyl iodide or hydrochloric acid. Say so ozonolysis directly gives this one, if we have a methyl iodide then of course you have a methylation on the amino nitrogen followed by a cleavage of the ammonium ion and that gives this ketone and very high enantiomeric purity of these ketones are seen. Now uh, how does this reaction occur it is uh, something that you can see it from here that you do the deprotonation and then the deprotonation leads to an enamine of uh, this kind here and uh, we are looking at thermodynamically stable trans enamine where this and these are trans to each other and if we look at the same thing and orient this particular part uh, which is what is this part here, here. So we orient it, uh, turn it around and put it in such a way that there is a chelation of the uh, this nitrogen with this lithium and methoxy group. So you have this nitrogen, nitrogen, carbon, carbon, oxygen same thing is here and uh, the only thing is that the LDA allows uh, lithium uh, and of course uh, the other ligands attached to it in this fashion and then there is a chelation. This chelation allows the, the, the cyclic uh, intermediate or the transition state having this cyclic forms, bicyclic forms as a matter of fact and then as you can see that the double bond is ready to react with an electrophile R3X but then whether the electrophile comes from the top or from the bottom is the one that will determine whether the reaction gives R3 into uh, alpha uh, orientation or beta orientation. As you can see from this particular transition state that the top approach of the R3X is prohibited uh, because of the steric hindrance caused by this large group which is present here and uh, therefore the R3X attaches from the lower side leading to the formation of the carbon R3 bond uh, in an alpha uh, orientation and this is how the reaction occurs. There are uh, three uh, references which I have mentioned uh, which you can uh, go through and see if you need to go into details of these uh, particular uh, reaction. So this is one of the examples of uh, how these um, uh, these uh, ramp and SAMP based uh, hydrazine reactions uh, have been exploited in uh, organic chemistry to let uh, asymmetric induction to occur. Now we uh, will see in the next class uh, what are the other uh, usefulness of these uh, hydrazones basically when you react this ketone with this hydrazine then you are generating hydrazones and then uh, after the CC bond formation is done then what is the uh, what are the further reactivity of these uh, this imines that can be taken up at the same time what are the further developments in asymmetric CC bond formation that also we will see in the next class. Uh, till then uh, bye and uh, thank you for today's class.